I really like Unihertz. This is a company that consistently makes some of the most interesting phones on the planet. And today we have a new Unihertz phone to unbox and kind of give first impressions on. And I think it's going to be the most controversial device that they have ever released. And that is because, I don't know how to put this any other way, it is their version, call it a knockoff, call it a ripoff, I don't know what you want to call it, but it's their version of the Nothing Phone 1. If you guys remember when the Nothing Phone 1 came out, a lot of people were very excited about this device. It's got the LEDs on the back, it's got a very interesting design. I can't find the price on their actual website. But on Amazon, it's something like $500, $424, up to $500, depending on who you're buying it from. And it's, you know, somewhat mid-range specs in terms of the processor, but some other things are high end. It looks, you know, quite nice, right? Like, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty solid-looking phone. A lot of people have really liked it. And then we saw just a couple of months ago, I think it was a Mobile World Congress, that Unihertz was making their own sort of nothing phone one style phone. Of course, this is the brand new Unihertz Luna. I believe this thing is still just up for pre-order at the moment. Like I said, I've got it here right now. We're gonna jump into an unboxing and see if this thing, uh, how it visually compares, let's say, to the real deal nothing phone one. I do wanna let you guys know as we're doing this that one big way that it compares quite favorably to the Real Deal Nothing Phone One is that it is $299 right now. It is considerably cheaper than that device. We are dealing with an octa-core processor of some sort. We do in fact have eight gigs of RAM, 5,000 milliamp hour battery. That's a very big battery. A 6.81 inch screen, which is probably 60 hertz, a 108 megapixel sensor with some other things going on. A night vision camera, which they mistakenly have written their night version. Not really sure what to make of a uh, night version camera. We're gonna be testing all of these things, if not in this video definitely in a review that will be coming. This is definitely like the shiniest, like nicest unboxing so far that I've seen them do. They're definitely trying to like play up the, you know, kind of like the, ooh, like it looks nice premium kind of thing going on. It looks like we have a screen protector here that comes with it. Very, very typical of Unihertz. They like to give you freebies. We're gonna set this aside, but I can already tell you that is probably much, much thicker and heavier than the real nothing phone one. I can already tell you that just based on that. We have a uh, charging brick in the box and a cable as well. What is this charging brick? What would that be like 18 watts? maximum something like that so i mean you know whatever 18 watt charger it's not the fastest thing in the world but it you know hey it's a it's a charger and it's in the box that's better than a lot of companies will offer you let's set all this aside and let's get into the device itself it looks like yeah it's already in a tpu case as well so let's let's pop this off so that we can truly like get the full experience before i flip it around all right there we go let's flip it around first off can you see how thick this thing is and there you go that is the unihertz luna that is what this device is called and as you can see here man it is really taking a lot of inspiration from that nothing phone one the lights here 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 all of these different lights sim tray labeled down there honestly it kind of looks cool. The camera bump is quite large. It doesn't stick out super far, although how could it with as thick as this phone actually is? Very iPhone-esque camera bump. Couple of buttons here on the side, probably a power fingerprint, and then a volume rocker over here. So these are probably shortcut keys, very, very typical of Unihertz. You have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. I believe that is an IR blaster because, you know, why not? Uh, SIM tray and then you have your USB-C there as well. Kind of a very shiny silver side to it. It's fairly heavy. Um, I think this is gonna be quite a bit heavier than the actual nothing phone. Here's my S23 Ultra next to it. It is very S23 Ultra sized, but it also feels like it is considerably heavier than the S23 Ultra. Let's go ahead and power this thing up and see what we got going on. This actually already has a screen protector on it. I can see it around the hole punch selfie camera. There's already a screen protector on, but maybe that's, a lot of times what they do is they have sort of like a soft screen protector and then there's a uh, like a tempered glass one in the box. That's probably what's going on here. I do really quickly want to point out, maybe I don't know how visible this is going to be. Can you see there's a line across that? 
portion there, this, the screen protector has some sort of a defect in it. So I'm going to have to peel this screen protector off straight out of the box. I also do want to kind of point out the uh, TPU protector. It's nothing crazy, right? But it was free and it was in the box. It's clear. You'll be able to see, you know, the looks of the phone through it. I think it's it's decent enough. All right. So setup did not take long at all. That wasn't wasn't too too bad at all. This is definitely a 60 hertz screen, which doesn't really shock me in any in any real way. Looks like we have a widget here on the home screen that says LED. And I'm assuming this is in some way there to like control these LED lights that are on the back. So you can set it to come to, <laughs> you can set it to flash when you have an incoming call for notifications, music visualization. We're gonna have to try that. You can turn them always on. Oh my. Oh wow, look at that. <laughs> that is, I think brighter than I was expecting it to be. That is kind of wild. Now, I will point out, I don't know if I can show you this with this camera. Maybe I'll overlay another shot, but there's almost like, like when any place there's like fingerprints, like it's almost kind of blowing out uh, where those lights are. That is wild. That is like, like I said, brighter than I thought it was going to be. Uh, patterns. That looks like green. I don't want to keep staring at this blue. Kind of a cyan. Random. Very interesting. So a decent amount of customization here. Ambient light. Oh, that's cool. It will display the color that's on the screen. It's just flashing back there. Why would it be doing that? What happened if I played like a YouTube video? Would it try to match the video? It doesn't seem to be matching the, <laughs> matching the video in any substantial way. We'll have to mess with that more later. It did say that it was a music visualizer though. So let's open up some music and let's see if we can get this thing visualizing. Oh wow, when it was muted it wasn't doing anything. Once I turned up the volume... Okay, I gotta tell you something. That might be cool for some people. For me, that's gonna have to be a great big no because I'm kind of photosensitive and that is <laughs> not gonna work for me. Let's turn that back off. So I guess these are just like quick toggles for those things, right? So calling, notifications, that just turns it on in general. That's just like an overall toggle. So they've done quite a bit with this widget to make some of the controls of these lights a bit easier to deal with. So that's pretty cool. Other than that, you have a really basic set of applications. There's not a lot of bloatware on this thing at all. There is an FM radio for your headphone jack, because why not? Let's take a look at this camera real quick and see, like, very briefly what this thing's capable of doing. I'll take a quick picture. We won't spend too much time on the camera at this portion, because we're going to do that in the full review. I'll just say, it's, I mean, it's about what I expected, right? Like, it's okay in terms of level of detail. The dynamic range is abysmal. The, the lamp is... It's the surface of the sun. There's no detail on that lamp at all. Perhaps I can get lucky and find a G-cam port. That would be interesting. I do also want to point out, I don't see an option to use the lights as like a fill light for filming. The camera app is fairly basic. I did say that there is a night vision camera, which looks like this. It's not going to be super great quality either, but if it's similar, I believe it's the exact same as it was on the Unihertz uh, Titan tank. Tank, Titan's the keyboard one. Tanks one with the infrared camera. And it's kind of a cool parlor trick, right? Like if you're out in like literally pitch black darkness, you're going to be able to see within a couple of feet of you using this thing fairly well. It did just occur to me that you can manually turn those lights on and then open up your camera. So there's no setting to do it, but you can just do it yourself, I guess. And that works fine. The macro mode, it's a two megapixel sensor. I mean, this is about what you should expect. And here's my keyboard with the backlight turned on as a fill light. That's actually kind of cool. You can kind of like have a color tone over the picture that you're taking of your choosing with this. So that's that's kind of neat, actually. Before we wrap things up, though, I do want to show you one of the bigger things that Unihertz always packs into their phones. By the way, this looks like Android 12. They always have this setting in here. Where is it at? Shortcut settings, because you have these two function keys and you can program them to be whatever you want them to be. So like each one can have 
three different functions assigned to it, which is really, really cool. Oh, okay, so this one here, LED light switch. They've actually already appended a double press to the LEDs. Now, what it's doing, though, is it's actually toggling, as you can see here, like the full thing off or on. So what you would need to do if you wanted to have this actually turn on the lights, you'd want to have that toggled on, and then that will then toggle it back and forth that may be where i want to be but i guess we do need to play around with it a bit more uh, as we go on but as you can see you can do whatever you want with it you can assign a long press to the google assistant you can assign any app or several different actions to either one of these keys so it's you know one thing that's cool to have a programmable key but you actually have two programmable keys with three possible functions per key and that is very very useful so there you go, guys. That is a quick unboxing and first impressions of the Unihertz Luna. Big shout out to Unihertz for once again being super cool and sending this thing straight away over to me. A full review will be coming very, very soon with in-depth look into the camera, more performance, battery life, and a whole lot more. So you're going to want to subscribe so you don't miss out on all of that. I will see you on the next one. Link to purchase in the description down below. By the way, your pre-order, I guess is what it should be. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.